on, my friends? And we're looking at uh, a game not traveled. Or Stellar Frontiers, or Interstellar Frontiers. Whatever the name may or may not have been, but the game system I've been working on for better part of uh, 10 plus years. Well, it's been longer than that since I last time I were working on it. But, you know. Anyway, I was digging out the other day. And I'll just briefly touch on something else. So, like I said, this here is probably the 2.0 version of it. And this would have been the 4.0 version of it right here and you can see where I had crossed the lines out as I individually lined each one of these up to type up the version that becomes this this one here and for this this would have been the 3.0 version right it would have been somewhere in my collection is uh, the ship component and build a um, uh, book that goes with this one as well but uh, I was digging around in a tote out in the garage just last night when I was looking for the sack of chits that I had for little player pieces little cardboard player pieces for Starfleet battles and I ran across that and mostly the stuff in that particular tote are many of the novels that I've written but have never you know, tried to get published anyway so what we're looking at is creating a character or an npc for my house and to do some stuff with in this case i want to create a ranger and in a previous video i discussed how your each ministry can have uh these elements within them and this gives you things that you can utilize so in this case i'm going to create a ranger from my ministry of culture and we will call this person, uh, I don't know, Fred Dodge, just for fun. And we're going to make him a male. And just so you know, before all this current fad of gender, this, that, the other thing was becoming a thing, I actually was trying to consider in my mind what that would mean in the distant future, especially you've had really deep control over eugenics and genetic manipulation of DNA to create in all kinds of, of human hybrids and what that would mean. So in this response, we have male, female, the third gender, which is a cross between the both of them. And then, of course, we would also have alien genders, which may def defeat the, the basic ca or cause or connection or whatever. And so I put down male, female, shemale, genetically altered, and alien or other unknown as possibilities. And I scratched out shemale because it seemed like an okay term to me. And now I'm not so sure with moral standards today, transgender would be in there too, except transgender uh, implies genetically altered. And that's what I would look at as, gen as somebody who's genetically or physically altered their physical attributes. In the case of somebody who is genetically engineered to have those attributes, then you actually have a third sex involved. Somebody who potentially has the capacity to do both and so on and so forth and I know there's a term for that I don't use it in part because I can't ever pronounce it properly and in part because it just opens up a whole a whole bag of worms that I just don't give a damn about anyhow also your genome genome is your race and once again there are scores and scores of them the game comes up with about 20 and about 15 of those 20 are genetically engineered humans subgen subgenomes or basically they were they're no longer pure human but they're human hybrid of some sort and when I mean hybrid I mean that these were done thousands of years ago and now have been successfully per perpetrating themselves without being genetically ticked with and then about five out of the 20 are actual purebred normal or actual alien aliens and the the numbers might even be a little higher than that but for for simplistic sake we're just going to say pure blood human or human and and yes i said pure blood human and what i mean by that is we're all bloody humans and we're and we're genetically 
born to be humans we're not altered to be anything other than human and I mean human doesn't matter what your color your skin is or your your diversity is or what sub gen sub gender genome of the human race you may think you belong to you're still a freaking human you are a Terran you are a Terran I am a Terran my wife is a Terran the, the lady down the street who's Spanish ancestry and her family are Terrans. They're just as human as everybody else, and I don't give a damn what any other thing in that scenario comes to. And I, and I believe that there's a lot of things I don't agree with what Ronald Reagan says and did, but there's one that if aliens did show up and become a thing and become a problem, if aliens were to invade Earth, if suddenly all of our petty differences amongst ourselves would cease to exist and it would become us versus them because that's the human nature that's what we do and so on and so forth so genome is human and that means size so when I look in here under size and I'm not gonna keep popping the book back and forth again but see I got genome and I explain all that stuff so pure pure humans are a human genome that's not been genetically altered many trues go to extreme two extremes to avoid inner genome breeding and what we're fearing to, to dilute their genetic pool pool or become a quote less than human that is always going to be a human problem and then we have genetically genetically modified humans or exotic humans majority of things inhabiting settled space today are the products of human genetic programs over the past 8,000 years and it goes on to explain that and then we have aliens. Well, humanity likes to lord, lord the fact that as known to date, humans were the first truly interstellar species. With the invention of the earliest, albeit crude modern standards jump drives, humans have worked to spread themselves across the stars. And then it goes on, one of the true first alien species they encountered with were the Katarans, a genome that evolved from a primitive hunting caps of the Katarin homeworld of Katar, a Kator. Feeling, feline in almost every way, etc., etc. So we got a random genome chart here. And, and I use charts pretty much every, exclusively, and this is there's reasons for that because it, the the it's just uh, removes the need for you to pick and choose things. So if you don't know what you want to be, roll the dice. If you don't know what you want your house to be, roll the dice. When you have new settlers coming to your colony, and you will get those events. This is the chart you choose to use if you choose just not to just say I want, because that's always the thing about this any kind of, any kind of game system. The rules are set up to be guidelines. So if you chose that you want to have a diverse species of people, you can choose that each batch that comes in is what you want them to be. Or you could create your entirely new one. The mechanics, there's a there's a chapter for to, to, to do just that. So you can do it. So anyway. And we've already so we picked the we picked the the gen genome and it says here under the human category, human are, are medium size. So size height is medium. And if you want to go into how many meters, how many inches and feet, that's up to you. Weight, it's kind of in the same category. So I'm just going to leave that blank for now. Age. Generically speaking, humanity potentially can live to be four or five hundred years old at this point with science and medicine. The odds are really, really good that if you're starting out, you're not going to be that old. Because it's just your, your training and makeup and experience should be much greater. So I'm going to say that... This individual is starting out at 18, and we'll throw, we'll just for fun, we'll throw a, D a D4 to give it a little extra. So, one. This individual is now 19 years old, so he's new. And since our house has not established training facilities or any of that nature, uh, this person would have got their base training in the old house where our colony effort originated from but they would not have progressed so by definition we want ranking of tried and in my ranking system it goes untried tried green regular veteran elite and an imperial and the numbers don't change much and it says you only need about a hundred points uh, quote experience points to advance to the next level but there's good reason you can uh, every cycle goes by you gain a point you're in a field doing something, you're gaining a point. Then there's points for doing missions, points for completing missions, 
points for certain things. So there's there's points, there's ways for this person to accelerate in their experience. Their limitations then become uh, uh, where when they, they how do they gain new skills? How do they get the training for those skills? How do they get new technology, new equipment? All this is stuff that we address as the game progresses. Uh, so in the initial start out, we could try it with an untried individual. I don't advise that. Meanwhile, uh, the 10,000 people are breakdown gives us about 2,500 tech one, uh, tech one uh, technicians are quote tried individuals. So in this case, that's what we're going to pick one of those. So we're going to go and we're going to say ranking is tried, and we're going to give it the very first. So it's 101. It would need to this. So Fred would need to get another 100 points to become green. So at tried, he gets a plus 20 attitude mod uh, attitude modifier, uh, attribute modifier. So all of his experience are here from these are going to add 20, 20 to everything. And so he would gain modifiers of plus 6 to plus 10 percent on, on doing things. And I generally break that down so every 20 points you get another. So he would get plus 6 for most stuff if we need to apply that. And then once he gets to 121, then this would go up to plus seven and so on. And keep in mind that we're using a D100 system, so it, it may sound high, but it's not really not, not that big of a deal. Uh, right, earning rankings, so it explains House, floops, troopers, agents, ministers, and so on earn plus one per cycle via every day's act of everyday activity. So every every ten days they get a point. Events such as negotiation, investigations, and combat earn this flu an additional ten points per event. So every time, and when we and, and when we talk about a, a negotiation event. This doesn't mean we go in and negotiate with five different people in the same in the same afternoon. So if we do any kind of negotiation over that that one cycle, it's one it, it, they don't stack. So you get this bonus. But if you were to negotiate and then end up with combat in that same ten day period, those are two different things. That would stack. Potentially, these guys can rank up pretty fast. The limits and slowdown will come when you're trying to give them the skill sets and other things that take time to learn. The game doesn't just let you. If you choose to ramrod over that, that's fine. That's you. That's however you want to do it. But the the game mechanics force you uh, force these characters to actually. If I want the Fred to learn a skill, he will, first off I need somebody with a, the skill that's higher than Fred to teach him this, and then I would have to set up some kind of learning environment, i.e. a dojo, for him to be taught, and then he would be taken out of circulation for five combat or five cycles. For five for fifty days, he's going to be out of circulation while he's gaining that training. So that's how this plays out. Accelerated training methods, etc. So there are a few things and a few ways to expand on things. Examples of earned ranking. So skills. So if we look at the chart, first to determine to see if the NPC has skills for making a yes, no, maybe roll. Be sure to add the house noble modifier, a status modifier, and chance modifier to blow to any of this. So, yes, no, or maybe, and uh, the chart's in here somewhere, and I don't want to go hunt it down, but it's a basically 33% ratio. So, we will go and here's, we'll do 10s and 20s. Right. So, we are looking for uh, minus 50. So our house lord is a squire. We automatically have a minus fifty. So the, there's no guarantee. I need to get I need to get between uh, thirty four and fifty to have a possibility of a skill. And so I get a hundred, which means no, he has no skill, which is fun. This is an un unknown for an unknown individual with no skills, just learning this stuff. It's just like our tech, our tech speciality. It hasn't been established. We know he's a, he's tried. We know he's going to be a tech one individual, and we were going to go have to go pick that. Uh, so we move on to earning skills. There are none. And some of the descriptions you have: martial training, or say martial arts, sniper, sapper, slicer, 
Diplomacy, infiltration, survival, small unit tactics, large, large unit tactics, investigation, driver or pilot, observation, endurance, science, uh, medical care. All right, so standard of living. Our standard of living is also known as SOL, and this is what they're going to get paid on a regular basis. The standard of living for your, your, your MVCs matters in part because uh, it allows them increased assets or, or uh, increased access to things, but also gives them a few advantages, but it costs that you cost your house money. So the question would be is what what level of standard do we want? If you think about James Bond, what kind of level of standard of living was he paid? What was he used to being? He pre presented himself to everybody, to the world, as being a sophisticated, somewhat playboy-ish character with a, a man of means, but it never actually went into any great detail as to exactly how he supported himself so I'm just going to start out with good quality which is kind of the middle of the road it gives me no negatives no mod uh, no positives so we'll say good quality and that is going to cost me So with, for worlds with an uh, infrastructure one through three, this is considered middle class. Accommodations are standard, granting some confidence. Food is mildly improved, and tech gear, a tech one gear is a standard with a growing number of additional t of higher tech. Pay standard for the general population, workers, etc. Low government officials is 0 0.01 credits per thousand population, or 10 credit, uh, Caesars per day per hundred. So in the case of flunkies, which is what this qualifies for, pay standard for flunkies and low level personalities is 0.25 to 0.5 credits per cycle, roughly 250 to 500 Caesars per day or 2,500 to 5,000 per cycle, depending on uh, how you want to look at it. Uh, and we'll give him the high end on that, so he's going to get paid point, point 0.5 per cycle, which then would get factored into the expenses for the culture ministry who handles the rangers and would increase their, their, their need of their budget. And house for house food funky such as sub ministers, junior officers, short positions, GQ adds one assistant or protector. Officers are usually small. Well, he's not going to qualify for any of that, so we don't have to worry about it. And it goes on and on about that sort of stuff and how that stuff relates. Technica, technical specialty. So a tried and tech one person has no speciality. So we still haven't, so we have none. That's something he will have to learn into. But some of our special specialities for tech, or for tech specials, administration, uh, astrogation, education, weapons, engineer, science, software, a shadow agent, i.e. spy, so things like this. It's like title or profession, so there's no title or profession. This also individual also does not have any wetware because we don't. He's not ranked high enough, and the house didn't have any to put in him. Now it's possible for the for NPCs to arrive via events like ship traffic rolls that will have higher ranking ability and higher uh, uh, um, standard of living, but also include things like special tech specialities and skills and wetware, i.e. cybernetics, bio implants, that's what I call wetware. Anyway, so gear tech level, our gear tech level for him at the moment is one, and uh, that's going to be standard because that's all the equipment we have for him to deal with, and we'll get to that. So body point and size, he is a medium individual, so he's between 1.6 and 1.9 meters, weighs somewhere between 46 and 99.9 and .9 kilograms. Medium is standard size for humans and size by all which others are measured. Uh, body points is three. So, an important point on body points. Body points, and, and I always go with 30 because you can, you can get 0.1 damage, 0.5 damage, that kind of stuff. Body points never increase, ever. Now there are artificial ways to enhance the basic points that your body can absorb, but at the end of the day, you do not get, so if you lose all your body points, you get to zero, you're, this character's gone, he's dead. Now there is some advanced cybernetic and bio implant technology that actually can subvert that for a limited amount of time, 
I mean, like suspend your brain function or something. So you could literally get 90% of your body destroyed as long as your brain remains and the implant that's in it remains. Potentially you can be, I don't know, if the, the house has the resources and the weather all to do it, you could regrow your body or replace it with a cybernetic, or with, uh, become a cyborg and all, all, uh, all that that entails. But there's also some limitations too. You can lose body points. Every implant you, you put in, every bio implant, every cybernetic implant you add to a character removes X amount of physical body points. They're losing parts of their physical body to be replaced, replaced by an artificial construct of some sort. So this actually can make your body point weaker. You could actually become that cyborg can become very very fragile in life sentence so in 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 the sense of that its cybernetic body can be destroyed over and over again is fine but if it's only got one point left of one you know zero point one body point and that zero point one body point takes the hit they're done they're dead the, even that bio that part that might res, you know retain your your consciousness is gone so there's there's some pretty cut or things about it. It goes on about talking about stacking body points when it comes to units. So that's different. It's an individual we're talking here. All right. So we've already determined age. There's actually a chart here for rolling it. Uh, training technicians, agents, and other flubes. How they go through all that training and stuff like that, which I'm not inclined to do. Uh, our move base, things like this. I'm not overly concerned about that right now. So our search is going to be based off of our uh, mat. So we have a plus 20 to our or a plus 20 to our search uh, range. Uh, I have, like I said, they have to figure that out. Negotiations plus 20. Interrogations plus 20. Cat is plus 20. All based off of these, and there's no modifiers. And range cat or combat attribute, and that's what we're talking about when I talk about cat, uh, ats. So. Physical attribute, pat. Mental attribute, reflex uh, uh, attribute. Seduction attribute, fear attribute, combat attribute. And then from them, we get phys the physical port includes your body points. Damage reduction, armor points. Armor, these are things that you either incorporated through cybernetic implants and or things you're wearing. So it's possible to, to get a DR that will reduce how much physical damage. So if you're wearing body armor and the body armor has a, a damage reduction, you're going to roll that in the body armor. Uh, it's damage exceeds the body armor's capacity. The DR kicks in, which then reduces how much damage you take. That's because obviously you're going to chew up the body armor first, and then you're going to do this, and you're going to do this kind of thing. And so move is based on reaction, and stealth is also based on reaction, negotiation, interrogation, based on those two different attributes, combat base. That's anything from personal combat uh, and melee combat, and then uh, ranged combat. Whether you're using uh, guns or you're piloting a, and using a, a, a starship turbo cannon or something right so weapons gear and soft points allowed the average human has five the capacity to carry five points of gear weird material is not the same thing as carried gear so if you're wearing a body armor the body armor itself may have an additional soft point which gives you an addition to your how much stuff you can carry but you can be wearing your clothes and then carrying a gun carrying a suitcase carrying this so but you're you actually have a limit to how many of these things you can carry and then reloads you have x amount of reloads and then when you carry more than a certain amount then they become a weight factor at that point they're considered uh using up one of these points right also genetic or genome traits a lot of genomes a lot of sub uh, uh, a lot of, uh, of exotic humans have advantages and disadvantages that goes with that genome and that's what you would put them in here and then affect anything up here that that's appropriate the same thing goes with uh, negatives so some, some of them have some negatives and things that affect things up here. And then, of course, separate baggage. And what we mean by that is all the other stuff your character gear character may have. Gear not worn and or carried. So it's possible for your gear, character to have a suitcase and a weapon case and things like this that they only take them somewhere when they're moving 
you know, they're not going about the field slugging these cases around all the time and trying to keep up and do things. You can't shoot somebody, you can't reach for your gun and shoot somebody if you got a suitcase in your hand. If you let go of that suitcase and then you're in the in the situation causes you to move somewhere else, you just left the suitcase behind. And whatever's in that suitcase, you can't get into it if it's not there. And if you do, it takes time. That's just standard in any game system I've ever ever worked at. The other same same thing applies to vehicles and things like this. So in the case of equipment, we actually don't have a lot to start with. Our game 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 came in with a handful of things. And I mean, I know that we had we had uh, tech tech one wise we have 50 ballistic pistols, 25 ballistic rifles. I believe we have, and I'll check that later if I'm wrong, 25 shotguns. We also had personal body armor, PVA, and we have uh, light body armor. And I believe there are 50 of each. Let me see that right. I need that down. Why I got in the book and I just don't want to go hunt the damn thing down. I don't have to. I probably I know I probably wrote it down somewhere, but where? Jeez, I guess we're gonna go hunt it down anyway. But I want to be sure. I don't want to be sure. All right. Pass exploring. Exploring. careful on the pages because I would have, have a hard time replacing this thing so it goes south. I, I got I copied this. I have this whole thing copied as a very crude PDF, but it's, the PDF is sloppy. It's not connected very well uh, for Pete's sake. I don't want to go hunt down everything that way. Just going to look at the index. This is why I included this index because I don't remember where everything is at. I mean, you know, how do you, how do you? Oh, you're killing me here. How did I phrase it? Yeah. Thirty-five, twenty-six. I just want to forward. Just, oh, this is not what I want to do. Here, what do we got here? Maps. Thirty-six, maybe. Uh, I'm going to guess here in a minute. I should have wrote it down. I thought I did, and I probably did on a different piece of paper. Okay, status, ministries. Oh, you're killing me here. Oh, I, don't care. I, don't, I give up. I'm pretty sure that I came with with 50, 50 light body armor and 50, 50 personal body armor. It was also uh, Tech One. I had a bunch of uh, Tech One uh, combat knives, if I remember right. That's pretty much it for equipment. And so, obviously, I'm going to have. I'm going to give my agent a pistol. And it's, it's tempting to give them a bunch of other stuff, but I need to have, uh, I'm going to be setting up a couple platoons and they're going to need some equipment too. So I'm going to have to be very cautious as to how I dole these out. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go a tech one ballistic pistol, which then uses one of my thyroid points and that would turn that to, now I would have 
49 in my, work, in my inventory. And we're going to have a Tech One personal body armor. Now you can make the argument of how that body armor, the personal body armor could be armored clothing, could be just, could be bulletproof vests, however you want to look at it. Uh, could be an outfit that's worn under your clothes. I don't know. So we're going to give this person five reloads because if that's a good, that's five full reloads for the pistol. And that's the equivalent of 50 bullets to carry around, which is not something we want. It's not enough to worry about in here just yet. There's one other thing I wanted to uh, address too, and that is transport. Now, I want to take this Ranger and I want to send this, and I'm actually going to make two of them. I'm just not going to do both of them here. And then I'm going to have both the Rangers uh, travel to where that, that smuggler that smuggler haven's at to start investigating it and uh, to get there I, I have to consider that it's somewhere else on my planet and it, I'm either going to have to task my drop shuttle to take them there or take them nearby and drop them off so they can walk to it uh, or they need to figure out how they're going to get there and obviously traveling across a planet an unknown planet especially a, a planet on foot is I don't, I'd like them to do this this year and not uh, be a uh, hundred cycles down the road before they get there. So I have to give them some kind of vehicle. And one of the things you came with is what your factory starts cranking out is uh, utility vehicles, UV, and uh, industrial vehicles, IV. But there's only X amount. When I look at my exchange, when I look at my exchange for... Uh, utility vehicles or the VU I'm producing five five per cycle but I'm consuming 18 so I actually have a negative 13 now you have an option as the house lord you control your exchange and what I mean by that is I can't change my needs but I can decide instead of routing my production into my needs, I can route that production into what's called the warehouse, which would be this line here. So I'm going to put this cycles run in the warehouse. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to go get me a vehicle or two from these individuals. Now the smallest utility vehicle at Tech One is wheeled. It weighs five tons, costs half a credit, it takes one pilot, Carries no ammo, can carry five tons of a uh, uh, material, which is quite a bit. Uh, has one hard point, so potentially you can mount a weapon on it. Has a, uh, a damage reduction at 0.5. Has armor points of five, and speed of 110, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Or I could choose to go down here to military utility vehicle ATV, i.e., a motorcycle or something the equivalent thereof, and it would be. 200k per unit or five per one ton so potentially I could use one ton of my five that's in the warehouse and produce five motorcycles uh, five ATVs with it and it only takes one person that potentially can carry uh, a person it can carry no additional cargo unless you're carrying it it has a soft point so ideally you can mount a small weapon personal scale weapon on it, it has no damage uh, no damage reduction and no armor points so basically it takes any damage it's screwed uh, so the difference is do I, do I give them a light Jeep or do I give them motorcycles uh, ATVs my inclination is to give them ATVs because it's two separate units they don't need a lot of carrying capacity and it's something that they can easily stash outside the, the haven uh, if need be so that's what we're going to do we're going to give them each agent, and I'm going to remove one, uh, so it's 0.2 per, 0.2 tons per uh, ATV, so I would leave me with uh, 4.6, 4.6 in the warehouse. And give each agent and it would be considered separate baggage. So it's going to be a tech one, 
ATV. And I don't need this, I don't need any of this. If I get into combat, I'll worry about the stats at that point. So this is how, basically, at the end of the day, I've created my first NPC for a mission. And I would just repeat the same thing for the next agent. So it's like in the case in the back, we got some additional stuff. Uh, notes for notes and history. Uh, I'll put down Fred joins Rangers on cycle seven. And cycle seven sent to investigate smugglers haven because that's what I'm also going to do this term before I finalize cycle seven and in the back we have things for a computer assisted device ie uh, a laptop or the equivalent thereof and some of the software options you can put in it uh, p send which is a, per a personal sentry unit uh, neuro implant packets so if you one of the most common neuro uh, cybernetic implants is for most people that it has the means to do it is a neural implant basically giving yourself your cell phone your computer uh, la your laptop all this stuff in a little tiny chip that goes in your head and then you interface it and uh, I have some pretty creative ways of explaining how that I envision how that stuff would play out and pan out uh, and I've done that in the numerous of those novel would be novels and stories so I have well, I well established in my mind what they would look like, and, and I've tried to explain it a little bit in the equipment, in the equipment guide, but which is up there. But anyway, so that's our Ranger Fred Dodge. Talk to you next time, guys. Going on, my friends. This is Rick, and hey, if you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, tell your buddies, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell anybody else that's in the gaming industry or gaming uh, fandom that says, hey, this is a channel worth checking out, right?